Hey everyone, this is HyperObject. I wanted to make a quick video about a cool tip I saw today on Twitter that uh, sounds pretty complicated but is not that hard to do. Uh, let me read you this tweet I saw this morning from Magnetic Sounds. It says, Steal the dynamics from a drum track by routing it to the side chain of a compressor that's inserted on anything you want to move like the drum track. So I saw that, I thought it was a cool tip, and then I scrolled down and all of the replies are these people saying, hey, this sounds great, but can you rephrase it? It's kind of hard to follow. And it sounds really complicated when you read it, um, but it only takes a few minutes to do. So what I'd like to do is create a new session here and just show you step by step how to do everything you just heard in the intro. Um, I am going to be using all free samples and free software, free plugins. So if you want to follow along, just look in the description. Uh, you can do exactly what I'm doing here. We're going to start out by sourcing some samples. Um, first thing we want to do is find a drum loop that's very expressive. Normally I would like play something in, but we'll just keep this really simple. Um, what I found from Lander samples is this Dirty Projectors loop that's pretty expressive. Let me just play it for you. And I like this because there's some silence and then there's some pretty loud hits and it's got this kind of wonky tempo to it that makes it sound really human. So I think this is a great loop for making uh, expressive dynamics come out of your other instruments. So now let's look at the... Um, synth hits I chose that we're going to kind of liven up with uh, dynamics. Uh, I looked at the lo-fi rock pack here on Lander Samples and I picked out these chords. I'll play one for you. So it sounds really nice, it sounds really lush, um, but there's no dynamics to it. It's just one hit and then it kind of fades out. So I think this is a great candidate for using this technique. So let's go and drop these samples into a new project in Reaper. Here we are with our new project. We know that the drum loop we want to use is 74 beats per minute, so I'm going to set the tempo of my project to that. And to start assembling, I'm going to take these chord hits, and I put together a little chord progression earlier, so we're going to go E minor 7th, zoom out a little bit here, F major 7th, E minor 7th, and this is just a different sample that's a little bit brighter. D major 7th. So let's just listen to... Oops, I didn't mean to make those overlap. Let's just listen to these four chords and see how they sound with no effects at all. I really like these samples. They sound good. So yeah, the nice and lush. Um, I like that the other hits here have kind of uh, different EQ to them, but obviously not really much happening dynamics wise. So to make this more interesting, we're going to use this technique where we steal the dynamics from a kind of lively drum track. So let's drop the drum track in and I'm going to name this channel Ghost Drums because we don't want to hear them. Let's listen to this just soloed so we can hear that drum loop again. Yeah, really interesting dynamics, really interesting rhythm. So let's look back at that tip from earlier and see what we're going to do with this advice. So what the tip says to do is to route this track to the side chain of a compressor that's inserted on what we want to move like the drum track. So let's go into the routing menu in Reaper. Um, again, I'm doing everything in Reaper today, uh, but I believe it should be pretty similar in any other DAW, uh, but I do really like Reaper. So we're going to, first we're going to mute the master send, because this is ghost track, we don't want to actually hear it, we just want to send it to the compressor. Then we're going to add a send to the chord track, that's the one we want to move. And then we don't actually want to hear it on that track, so instead of routing to the left and right channels, channels 1 and 2, I'm going to create new channels on this track, which are channels 3 and 4, and those are not audible, the ones we just created. So now we're going to use the only effect that we need to use on this project, which is the compressor. Uh, I'm just going to be using the stock Reaper compressor. 
and we've already got our auxiliary send uh, from the drum track going here. So I'm going to pull down to auxiliary input. That's going to look at channels three and four on, on here. Receives three and four on this channel. And let's just see what that looks like over here on the uh, detector side. So without me touching anything, you can kind of see that this channel is moving in time with that drum track that we muted. So that's good. That means it's working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just look at the meter for the drum track here and see where it's hitting its maximum, its minimum. Looks like in the bits of this drum loop where it's silent, it's getting down to maybe around minus 30 at the lowest. And uh, I want this to be really lively sounding. So I'm going to set the threshold of the compressor on our synth all the way down to minus 30, which means that on the silent parts of our drum loop, it's not going to affect the compressor. But then as soon as it goes above minus 30, it's going to have at least some effect on the compressor. Um, I want this to sound pretty dramatic. So I'm going to turn the ratio up pretty high to start with. And then we're just going to play this back to see what it sounds like. So you can hear the difference, right? Let's back off the ratio a little bit. So now instead of that kind of static once every bar hit, we've got some dynamic movement and that makes this a lot livelier. Let's listen to that again. And then we've got another drum loop that's in the same BPM from this uh, Dirty Projector set. So I'm going to drop that in. All right. So that's it. We've now got our synth hits kind of ducking to the time of this other drum track. So the original tip from Magnetic Sound uh, told you to steal the dynamics from a drum track, but of course you can really use uh, any track on here. If you've got some old project uh, where you had a really interesting synth line or a really cool bass line with some funky rhythms or something like that, you can use that as a ghost track. Um, and again, all you do is you don't send it to the master, you send it to an auxiliary input on the channel that's got your compressor, and then you route that as the auxiliary into the compressor, and it lets you do cool stuff like this. So that's it. That's a whole tip. Um, from start to finish, you know, if you're not talking through it, it really only takes a minute to do. Um, and again, if you're looking at this and you don't use Reaper, but you kind of need a little help to follow through, I would really encourage you to go ahead and download everything I use here. Go through it step by step, uh, because I think a compressor is a really great tool for a producer to be able to use to, uh, well, do a lot of different things with the dynamics of your track. So I hope this tip is something you can use. Uh, shout out to Magnetic Sound for posting this and for just having a really good uh, Twitter account in general. And if you like this, please take a look at the other stuff on my channel. I don't do tutorials very often, uh, but I like to play synths a lot. Thanks for watching.